Hey everyone, tonight what I want to do is I want to give three different AI models a problem that I wrote for Humanity's last exam that did not get accepted. So for those of you who don't know, Humanity's last exam was a exam to use as a benchmark for AI models. So basically just getting a bunch of experts to write very hard questions that they thought would be hard for an AI to solve. and it would be used as a way to test the intelligence of up and coming AI models. So I wrote a few questions, mine didn't get picked, that's fine, but I thought it would be cool to share with you nonetheless, because now since they're not accepted, I don't have to feel bad about revealing what they were. And we can see how well the latest AI models are performing on this particular question. Now, this is a question from electromagnetism in physics. I'd say it's roughly at the level of what you'd expect an undergraduate taking a Griffiths electrodynamics course to be able to do. So we're talking like a junior or senior physics major or someone taking a class using this book should be able to Solve this kind of problem. So maybe it was just a little bit too easy for humanity's last exam. Nevertheless, this is the problem here involves Pokemon. And I'll just read the problem statement. It says the Pokemon electrode can be modeled as a non-uniformly charged sphere with a charge density that is given by the form, this expression. According to the Kanto region Pokedex, electrode has a diameter of 1.20 meters and when releasing attack transfers about 300 coulombs of charge at maximum. The central charge density rho naught can be approximated as its maximum charge output divided by its total volume. If an electrode is located at the origin of some coordinate system, what would be the magnitude of the force in Terra Newtons experienced by a charge point particle of 1 coulombs located at this position in XYZ space? Assume the permittivity of free space when solving this problem. Okay, so we're not going to go through the whole physics of this because that could take up the whole video, but in essence involves recognizing that you can relate the charge density to the electric field using one of Maxwell's equations, so it's the differential form of Gauss's law. You just have to perform an integration and then find the magnitude of a vector. So this is sort of the rough sketch outline of how you would expect someone to solve this problem. And I also went ahead and carried out the calculation in Mathematica. And so if you look at the Mathematica calculations in Terra Newtons, the answer is three. So three is the final answer that we're looking for from all of these different AI models. And without further ado, I am just going to Go ahead and start running all of them. So all three of the models I'm testing are here. We're going to test O3 Mini High, the latest Gemini Advanced 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental, which is the best one for multi-step reasoning, apparently. So we're going to try that one. And then we're going to try DeepSeek R1, just because DeepSeek has, of course, taken the whole AI world by storm with its shocking release and performance. So let's just go ahead and click Go on all of them. Okay, wow, this is so quick. And let's see here, how, how fast can it do it? Uh-oh, I think I already saw the answer. Oh, no way. I think Gemini Advanced did it in like, however many seconds. Yep, that's the, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it was too easy for humanity's last exam. Someone timed that, I don't even know how fast that was. That was, that was too quick, I can't even, See how long it thought, but that's crazy. That is crazy. How about open? How about O3 Mini High? How did it do? Oh, it did it in. I don't know what was that. Twenty six seconds. Oh my goodness gracious! And Deep Seek R1 still at it, still using the chain of thought here. But we're going to see, hopefully, in the next thirty seconds or so, if it gets it. So again, the answer is three. And we are still waiting. So it is thinking for quite some time here. It looks like what it's doing is that it's splitting up the integral into multiple different integrals here. So that's totally legit, right? I think the other two models did it uh, all at once. It didn't break it up into separate uh, integrals, at least not explicitly, but it doesn't really matter though. It's still taking its time here. It is still going. I feel like it's been more than a minute and a half, which doesn't sound like that long, but con considering the fact that O3 Mini High and 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental got it within half a minute each, 
this feels a bit slow. But if it does get it, I will be very impressed considering DeepSeek is a free model and seems to me is on par with what OpenAI's best model can do. Wait, no, wait, early in my calculation after some flying, the term inside the brackets was approximately this, so this, so it's already trying to evaluate stuff to this many decimal places. That's a lot of decimal places it's trying to work with here. And it seems like it's going, I don't want to say completely in circles, but it's just interesting to see how it's trying to do all these calculations. I mean, look at it taking 0.6 raised to the ninth power here. Oh my gosh. You know, I didn't think we'd be here this long, but we're still here. This is like at least a couple of minutes afterwards. I haven't exactly timed this, but this feels like it's been quite the time. Oh! Oh, look at that. It looks like it is about to get 3.06 teranewtons. Yes, yeah, so it looks like it's about to get 3 teranewtons. At least it got it in the chain of thought. Now hopefully it won't try and undo itself here. Sometimes I feel like I see the final answer early on in the chain of thought. And then I think to myself, no, you don't have to keep going. You got it. Just just stop, stop thinking. <laughs> you got it already. And it's still going for the final answer here and proceeding symbolically here again. So why is it doing that? Okay, using some approximations here. Taking a long time. And it, again, here it is, it got the right answer. It's three, right? Three paranewtons. So it really should stop here, which it already found somewhere up here, right? Like right there. So it's already verified two different ways that it got the right answer, but it's still producing tokens. So it's pretty cool, I think that DeepSeek is pretty thorough in its approach, even though it might be completely unnecessary at times. It's nice to know that your model will try and be absolutely sure before giving its final answer. But earlier the calculation, there was 3.007. So now it tried doing it, and now it has 3.11 teranewton. So it looks like, I mean, that's not terribly off from each other, but it's trying to resolve some discrepancy that I think is honestly not that big of a deal for a problem like this. But I, again, I'm very impressed here. It says, ah, so my previous calculation of Q and close off lets me see another approach. Oh my God, let's verify the calculations again. Oh my goodness. I think it's like the fourth or the third time that it's trying to verify three Terra Newtons. I mean, Gemini and O3 Mini were just like, bam, it's three. That's the final answer, whereas DeepSeek is just generating those tokens, really using the test time compute to, to be absolutely certain this is the right thing. So the answer is approximately 3.0. When Terran is given the problem asked for the magnitude, we should round to a reasonable number. The given data has this. So it's now checking for the significant figures here. <laughs> and it's really, oh my goodness. However, the integration might actually simplify in a way that we didn't notice. Oh my goodness, it like was thinking about giving the final answer. Now it's like, no, wait a minute. Let's go back and redo the integration. Wow. It, they're really just letting Deep Sea think here. This part is a bit confusing. I'm a bit confused as to why you need to keep doing this, but heck yeah, I guess. But let's verify the total charge. The answer is approximately 3.01. Oh my gosh. It's like, no, check this, check this, check this, check this. If I had enough time on my exams, I might have done this as well. But unfortunately, those exams just weren't long enough to support multiple attempts. So, blah, 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 blah. There's discrepancy here. This seems contradictory. I wonder if my problem at all stumped the other models here, made them a bit confused here. Break down the problem, understand the problem, compute. The radius, central charge density, maximum charge output, right? Oh my gosh. Look how many tokens have been generated. This is pretty crazy. The fact it's taken this many tokens to, to be this confident in its answer. I mean, oh, here we go. Final answer. Here we go. It After all this time, I think it's been about 10 minutes, a little bit less than 10 minutes of time for it to come to this conclusion, but it will also get final answer correct hopefully if it finishes up here doing this integral 
Yes, there we go. 3.01 Terra Newtons, and how many tokens did that take? I don't even want to count. How long was, did that take to think? It thought for 579 seconds. Thought for nearly 10 minutes compared to the, I want to say, 20 to 30 seconds from Google Gemini and the 26 seconds from O3 Mini High. So pretty cool that it was it was that persistent in trying to verify it to itself that what it was doing was correct. Maybe not all that necessary, but very welcome, I would say. Uh, the only thing we had to pay with was our time. So congrats to all three models for getting the question right. Uh, I can see why my question didn't quite make the cut at Humanity's last exam. I hope that this gives you some idea of how well these models can perform with respect to each other. And I hope to do more tests like this in the future, and I hope to see you next time. Take it easy, everyone.